The story begins in Bavaria on May 1st, 1776. May 1st is now the satanic holiday of Beltane. Adam Weisshaupt, Anton von Mustenhausen, Mertz Tiberius, Franz Xavier Zwack, and Adolf Baron von Nige formed the Order of the Illuminati. Weisshaupt's philosophy was that the Illuminati should rule the world. Adam Weisshaupt said the following, quote, the great strength of our order lies in its concealment. Let it never appear in any place in its own name, but by another name and another activity. None is fitter than Freemasonry. The public is accustomed to it, expect little from it, and therefore takes little notice of it." Unquote. So it was said, they would infiltrate Freemasonry to achieve their goal. The one who helped Weissup gain admission into lodges was Adolf Baron von Nisch. Adolf attained the highest degree of the Knights Templar, the Cypric Knight, in 1777 at Hanu. Here's a depiction of a Knights Templar initiation ritual. From late 1777 and onward, Weishaupt and his order infiltrated Masonic lodges all over Belgium, Austria, France, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Poland, Hungary, and Italy. One of Weishaupt's first initiates, Louis Philip Joseph, Duke of Orleans, had already been initiated into the French Grand Lodge, and according to Mackey's encyclopedia, he was elected Grand Master in 1773 upon the death of Count de Clermont. Weishaupt stated that the plan for the New World Order could not successfully be executed in any other way than through secret societies that gradually and quietly took over government. The Illuminati gained significant control on July 16, 1782 at the Masonic Congress of Wilhelmsbad. This meeting included Masons from all over Europe and Illuminati members such as Von Nige. Here the Illuminati spread their doctrine and promoted their ideology. This allowed them to solidify their control over Masonic lodges of Europe and to be viewed as the leaders of the occult One World Movement. The Congress was held at Mayor Amschel Rothschild's castle in Wilhelmsbad. The Congress included representatives of all secret societies, Martinists as well as Freemasons and Illuminati. This historian Nesta Webster tells us this, Those in the Congress were under oath to reveal nothing. One such Mason, Comte de Vary, a member of the Martinist Lodge at Lyons, returning from the Congress could not conceal his alarm, and when questioned on the tragic secrets, he had brought back with him this reply, quote, I will not confide them to you. I can only tell you that this is very much more serious than you think. The conspiracy which is being woven is so well thought out that it will be, so to speak, impossible for the monarchy and the church to escape it. That's from his biographer M. Costa Begerard. In Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, page 346 and 347, he says, quote, The order was very popular and enrolled no less than 2,000 names upon its register, among whom were some of the most distinguished men of Germany. It extended rapidly into other countries, and its lodges were to be found in France, Belgium, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Poland, Hungary, and Italy." Unquote. As the order grew very powerful in Europe, patriotic ruler Duke Karl Theodor came to power in Bavaria. He issued a ban against all secret societies in Bavaria. For this reason, on July 20th, 1785, Franz George Lang was struck by lightning and died on a courier route with instructions from Weisept about the planned French Revolution addressed to the Grand Master of the Grand Orient in Paris. Everything was handed over to the Bavarian government. On August 4th, a new ban on secret societies was issued. On February 11th, Weishaupt was discharged and forbidden to live in Ingolstadt or Munich. On February 16th, he went underground and was hidden by his Illuminati brother, Joseph Martin. A few days later, he fled to Nuremberg for a short while and then traveled to the free city of Rathenburg, where he continued his activities underground. Although the Bavarian government arrested as many Illuminati members as they could possibly find and even had four testify exposing the satanic nature of its aims, by this point the Illuminati so thoroughly enmeshed itself into Freemasonry across Europe, there was no telling where Illuminism ended and Freemasonry began. The documents that were seized by the Bavarian government were sent to all European leaders to warn them, but there was a failure to heed warning. Some of the European leaders had already fallen under the influence of the Illuminati, and others found it just too difficult to believe. Many 
people believe that it was at this time that the Illuminati was effectively disbanded and stopped in 1785, but that's not what the evidence points to. We know from credible sources that the Illuminati spread all over Europe and got no less than 3,000 members, so how could the Bavarian government control that? It doesn't make sense. Adam Weishaupt succeeded at forging an alliance between Illuminati's Freemasonry and the growing Rothschild banking network. This gave the order the means to carry out its plans and to multiply its influence. That's Nesta Webster World Revolution, page 20, and Kant Egan Caesar Corti, The Rise of the House of Rothschild, page 10. As a result of the alliance with the Rothschilds, the Illuminati grew, it took root, it flourished, it gathered itself more men of royal and noble titles, even the Jesuits joined. The Rothschilds had played a major role in the Bavarian Illuminati, hosting the Masonic Congress of Wilhelmsbad. When Amschel Rothschild died, headship fell onto Nathan Rothschild of England. The bloodline continued to infiltrate lodges in England. He was initiated into London's Lodge of Emulation, Fritz Springmeier Bloodlines of the Illuminati. Karl Rothschild became leader in 1818. An Alta Vendetta document that Karl prepared was sent to the headquarters of Masonry. A copy of the document was lost and the Masons were upset and offered a reward for the return of the document. It was called Practical Code of Rules Guide for the Heads of the Highest Grades of Freemasonry. James Rothschild spread his family to France. James was a 33rd degree Scottish Rite. Fritz Springmeier Bloodlines of the Illuminati. Thirteen years after the Illuminati supposedly stopped, Reverend G.W. Snyder wrote George Washington a letter, August 22, 1798. He says, quote, A society of Freemasons that distinguished itself by the name of Illuminati, whose plan is to overthrow all government and religion. It might be within your power to prevent the horrid plan from corrupting these English lodges over which you preside, unquote. Here's the original manuscript sources of George Washington's writings from the U.S. government printing office. In response to Snyder's letter, Washington writes, quote, I have heard much of the nefarious and dangerous plan and doctrines of the Illuminati. It is not my intention to doubt that the doctrine of the Illuminati and the principles of Jacobinism had not spread in the United States. On the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of this fact than I am. So what he's saying is you don't have to tell me about the Illuminati and what they're doing in New York, I already know. When he says he's satisfied, that does not mean he's happy about it. In that old English context, it means he's convinced of it. So no one is more convinced than I am. Then he says, and I'm going to paraphrase for you because it's in old English. He says, the idea that I meant to convey was that I did not believe that the lodges of the Freemasons in this country had as societies endeavored to propagate the diabolical tenets of the first, the Illuminati, or the pernicious principles of the latter, the Jacobins, but that there are individuals in the Masonic order who may have done this. So he's saying that no whole lodge in America is involved in this as a whole society, but individuals in the lodges may be, or that the founder or instruments employed to found the democratic societies in the United States, later known as the Democratic Party, may have had these objects in mind and actually had the separation of the people from their government in view is too evident to be questioned. So what he's saying is he knows of the Illuminati's plans, they are real, no whole lodge is involved in it in America yet, but individuals in the lodges probably are, and the Democratic Party was founded by a secret society of Masons that want to divide the people from their government and it's too evident to be questioned. Joseph Willard, president of Harvard in 1812, said, quote, There is sufficient evidence that a number of societies of the Illuminati have been established in this land. They are doubtless trying to secretly undermine all our ancient institutions, civil and sacred. The enemies of all order are seeking our ruin. Should they prevail, our independence would fall, of course. A Republican government would be annihilated. 
the u s state department began a close